So when we're placing wires onto our drawing, we can actually place multiple wires as well. Now you'll notice I've got two connectors again, the basic ones with the four connectors on each connector. So let's go to multiple bus here. Now that's on the schematic tab on the ribbon. Insert wires and wire numbers and multiple bus. Now I've got to look at the spacing here. I'm going to set the spacing up so that it's one inch by one inch, like so. I'm going to go for component multiple wires. And I can also go for another bus or an empty space or an empty space vertical. So I can do horizontal or vertical there. The reason being is I might just be setting up wiring without connectors at this particular point. So if I click on OK now, what it's prompting me to do is window select starting wire connection point. So you'll notice the connector points are now highlighted with their little green stars. Now you'll notice I've got snap and grid on. It's sometimes easier to do a crossing selection window without them on. So I'll now click and I'll drag across those points there and click for the second part of the window there. You can see the connections highlight. So one, two and three are now highlighted with those little red circles. I now right click to confirm that. And now it will prompt me to select the points where I've got to go to. And as you can see, look, I'm moving now. I can go this way and the arrows highlight the directions of the wires. So can you see that there? Look, if I come down vertically, I can go left or right as well. So I'm going to come down here and I'm going to select a point where I want to go to. So you'll notice that goes straight to those connector points there on that bus there. So I click and it puts the wires in for me. The lovely thing about that, all the hoops are put in as well so that all the wires are clear and where they're going. Now the lovely thing about that is they are just wires. They're multiple wires, but they're just wires, just like placing a single wire. So the trick is there, I could then, if I want to, perhaps go to the icon menu and perhaps put a splice in. So there's my recently used splice. So I might pop a splice, say, there. So if I make sure I don't snap. So let's take object snap off. And I'll just click there. Now, I'm not going to worry about a component tag. I'm just going to OK that for the moment. And you'll see my splice there. Now, the nice thing about that is I can now take wires from that splice. So if I do a single wire and take it from the O snap, which I need to switch back on. So I go nearest there, zoom in a bit, nearest. That wire now comes off of there. And what I can do is I can take that maybe to there, like so, and click. And that takes that to the nearest one, which is number one. Press enter, so I've got another wire going across. But you can see how clever the multiple wire setting is. Now, I don't have to have connectors. As I said, I can just put wires into space, both horizontally and vertically as well. But that multiple wires, as you can see, it's another time saving exercise. It saves you having to draw multiple wires that are regularly spaced. Now, obviously, you can utilize snap and grid to do that as well, but you can specify the spacings horizontally and vertically between the wires, which makes your life really easy. It saves time, it's professional, it's quick, it's clean, but most importantly, it's accurate. So make sure that you use your multiple wires in AutoCAD Electrical. Now, something we didn't do. Make sure that we save our drawing with what we've done. But also, more importantly, add your active drawing to your project. So it's a right click, add active drawing, yes to the default values of the project. And you'll see that multiple wires has got sheet 003 because I copied the previous drawing. So I'll right click there. Go to properties, make sure you change the sheet number as well so it's all neat and tidy. And again, get into the habit of changing this. It's so important to add your drawings to your project as you go because you can so easily create a massive load of drawings in a folder and not know which project they're associated with. File management, make sure that you add your project to whatever you're doing, but more importantly, add the drawings to the drawing list in the project as well. We're now going to look at wire numbering. Now, we haven't numbered any wires in our drawing yet. I've created a new drawing by copying the previous one, JIC wire numbering. Remember, add it to your project first. So there's the project. Click on it. Right click. Add active drawing. Yes to updating the project values. Always do this. It's very important. Now, you'll notice the sheet number has updated automatically this time. That's because I've previously opened this drawing and updated the sheet in a previous part of when I was setting up the drawing. So you don't need to worry about that this time. 
However, we need to start looking at wire numbering and making sure that our wires are numbered. So we go to the schematic tab on the ribbon, insert wires, wire numbers panel there, and I'm going to click on wire numbers. Click on the down arrow. We've got a choice of wire numbering, three phase wire numbering, or PLC input output numbering. All we need is wire numbers for this. We haven't got any three phase or PLC going on just yet. Now we're going to tag new unnumbered wires only. We're going to make them sequential. So I'm going to click there and start at 001. I can put a format override in there if I want to. Now, do you remember when I mentioned that we could set things up to work with layer names? In this case, I could use the wire layer format override. I could set that up to use layer names and use layer properties for the wiring. I'm not going to in this case. I can also insert the wires as fixed, but I don't want to do that either. I can cross reference my signals as well and freshen the database for signals. That's for things like switches and relays that are sending signals down the wires. In this case, I haven't got anything like that. So I'm going to pick individual wires. I'm going to select this one here and this one here, and then right click to confirm, and you'll see it numbers up those two wires. Here's the clever thing. If I go back to wire now and click on another wire, just pick individual wires. I'm not going to change any settings and click on this one here and then right click to confirm. It puts a question mark there. And that question mark, when I double click on it, will actually show me that wire number isn't there. It's actually a block. So I can change that value if I want to and put 003 and apply that and OK it and it updates. But be careful when you do that. Check that it relates back to the project and any other wiring or signals that you may have. Now, what I can do is go back to wire numbering again. This time, tag new, unnumbered only. I've already got 003, so what I want to do is start at 004. If I start at 004 with a single increment and pick individual wires and select this wire here and this wire here and right click to confirm, that one updates. Now this one won't update because it's not actually joined. Can you see that? So we have a problem there. And also this wire was just dropped in. Can you remember that on the previous drawing? What I might actually do there is remove those in this particular case because they're not joining and we're not getting any wire numbering there. So it might mean that they're orphaned or disconnected. We can easily place another wire. So what I'll do is I'll remove that like that and I'll go and place a wire. And I'll go from, make sure you've got your O snap on, so that you get the snap. So I'm going from that point there. And I'm coming in and I want to go to that one there. So that should join. Press enter. Let's try that wire numbering again. Because sometimes you get this quirk where it doesn't join. Now let's have a look at the numbering. We got to 004, didn't we? So we'll go sequential. Go 005 this time. Tag new unnumbered only in this case. Pick individual wire. I'm going to pick that wire there, enter to confirm, and it still doesn't update. So there's obviously an issue there with that wire coming off of that splice and going to that connector block. Might be a circuit problem, but again, we'll look into that maybe later on. What I would do there is I would remove that wire because it's obviously causing problems and look at a different solution maybe later on down the line. So let's just remove those like so. If I zoom out now, you can see that I'm numbering those wires nice and neatly like so. Sometimes you only want to add source and destination signals to a particular part of an AutoCAD electrical drawing. So you only draw the part that you want to see on that particular drawing and then you show where the source and destination signals are coming from, but you use a symbol just to highlight where they're coming into the circuit. Now I've already set the drawing up, JIC, source and destination signals 1, and it's 006. So that's all in the project already and it's active in the project. But here we've got a wire going into space. So we need to place a source arrow. So there's our source arrow there. So we're in the schematic tab again, like before. Insert wires and wire numbers, source arrow, destination arrow, fan, in and out, reference only arrows. I'm going to go for a source arrow. I'm going to select the wire end, which is right there. Now I get asked for information. So you can see that we've got arrow style. I can change arrow styles. So I'm going to go for arrow style 2. And at the moment, I'm using the default SIG000. I'm just going to stick with the default code for now. 
I could view signal codes used so far in drawings, project, I can search for one, or I can pick an entity on the destination network. If I click on OK, no signal code entered. So I need to use that signal code. It's got to have a code, otherwise it won't work. So I click on Use, and it just uses the default for me. Click on OK. Do I want to insert a matching destination arrow? I'm going to OK that, and select the wire end for the destination code. So it might go somewhere else, so I need a wire end somewhere. So if I go for a wire end there, for example, add a branching wire stub for arrow, OK. And what it does, can you see it adds it there? So it's like an input-output kind of environment. So I've clicked on that wire there. Now, that might not work in an electrical environment. I'm just showing you that a destination arrow can be placed as well. So if I click there, there's my destination from and to. So what I can do now is I can actually edit these if I want to. So I can double click there and I can edit the information on that and change the wire number. Now, I'm not too worried about the wire numbers at the moment because there are other wires coming in. I might leave them as question mark. But you'll notice where I've joined this one, can you see that all the numbers need redoing now? So you would need to go in and renumber your wires. But the benefit you have there now is you've got a destination where a signal is coming from and to into your circuit that might be operating something like a relay or perhaps a motor or something like that.